In this example, we need to solve the equation x squared minus 6x minus 4 equals 0. Well, what type of equation do we have? What's the highest exponent on any of the x's? It is a 2. Therefore, this is a quadratic equation. And to solve quadratic equations, we either try to factor them or use the quadratic formula. But to use either method, we need to have the quadratic equation written in standard form. And by standard form, I mean everything on one side, zero on the other, and the terms on this side have to be written in descending order. The x squared term, the x, and then the constant. Well, is my equation in standard form? I have zero on one side, and on this side, is everything written in descending order? Yes, I have my x squared term, my x, and then my constant. So we're ready to solve the equation. Now to solve it, whether we factor or use the quadratic formula, I need to know the values for a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of the x squared term. So in my case, what number are we too efficient to write in front of that x squared? It's a 1. B is the coefficient of the x term, so B is negative 6, and C is the constant term, it is negative 4. Now, if you try to factor this, it's one of the easier ones since A is 1. We'd need two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 6. That's not possible, so this problem won't factor so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And you should all have that memorized. And it, it is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that is all under the radical, all divided by 2a. Now all we have to do is plug these numbers into the formula. So x equals the opposite of b, so b is negative 6, so it's the opposite of negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, b is negative 6 all squared, minus 4 times a, a is 1, and c is negative 4. That is all under the radical. And then that whole thing is divided by 2 times a, and what's a? 1. So now all we have to do is simplify. The opposite of negative 6 is positive 6, plus or minus the square root of. You need to square the negative 6 first, so negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Then I have negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. All divided by 2 times 1 is 2. So I'm going to get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 16 is 52, all divided by 2. So we need to simplify the square root of 52. So let's factor 52. Uh, let's see, it's even, so 2 divides into 52 26 times. And 26 is even, so it's 2 times 13. 13 is prime. And then I'm going to group these two together. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 13 is 52. So I'm going to have x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 13, all divided by 2, which is 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 13 can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 13, all divided by 2. So x equals 6 plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 13 does not simplify, so I just have 2 times the square root of 13, all divided by 2. Now notice, this term, this term, 
and this term are all divisible by 2. So we're going to have to reduce this answer. And the simplest way is to divide the 2 into both terms in the numerator. So I'm going to have 6 over 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 13 over 2. Now I can reduce 2 goes into 6 3 times. So I'm going to get 3 over 1, which is 3 plus or minus, these twos both reduce, I get plus or minus the square root of 13. So my two answers are x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 13. One thing I want to point out is the most common student error on problems like this are when they reduce. And what a lot of students do is when they get to this point, they see the 2 and the 6, they immediately reduce these two, but don't realize the 2 has to divide into the other term in the numerator. The simplest way to do it is simplify the numerator, then divide the denominator into each individual term, terms in the numerator. You'll make a lot less mistakes that way. Also, don't forget there are two solutions. If you're asked for the individual solutions, you can write x equals 3 plus the square root of 13. And the other one is x equals 3 minus the square root of 13.